I know who can handle a car like that. Ah, well, it's not a patch on your sideways skills, that's for sure. <laughs> Modest as always. So, what are we doing? I need a third party evaluation of the modifications to my sprinter. So, just drift it down the runway. Let's go. A nice show for the local drift club. Just like back in the UK. That really is the best way around a corner. Actually, there is increasing acceptance of the value of lateral velocity in shortening a corner, even in more conventional racing contexts. It's been too long, Rob. There we go. That's everything shaken out and warmed up. Feel free to keep going, though. The temp on those tyres is coming up nicely. Keep at it. Head back to the top if you want another run. So, when's the grand opening of Drift Club Mexico? Who told you about that? <laughs> You're too easy, Rob. Call me for the next one, you hear? So, what have we got here? The Nismo GTR. I do love a Nissan. One of the best drift platforms in the world. In my opinion, of course. Evidence for other opinions is welcome. We've got a route. Right, let's see what this can do. It's technical. Some very tight turns along the reservoir. Rear wheel drive is perfect for this, though. Corners come in. Stop, of course. This is all wheel drive. And pricing. Usually you see them on the pro drift instead. Luckily, we had one knocking around the festival, so uh, I had a look at it. The GTR is famous as a modular platform, and that's not just because of the wheelbase and the organic grip. The PR38 DET engine is an exceptional starting point for a drift. The stock turbos can easily make 700 bhp. You need to build for that amount of power at both ends of the intake exhaust probe, of course. Final analysis, not a cheap drift platform, but definitely a good one. Good car. What's the next recruitment vehicle? Recruitment? I have no idea what you're talking about. Sure. Call me. That's a 325. Very nice. Not stock, though, right? Not at all. Get in. I'll tell you as we go. Rear-wheel drive, 6.2-litre V8 engine, developing 750 bhp. Custom camber for optimal entrance and exit angles. 
is quite the piece of engineering. Alejandra said this was her first drift car. That makes sense. Abundant parts, reliable, and easy to work off, too. Oh, if you're interested in how we calculate drift scores, it's about speed and angle in the drift. That means there's a maximum theoretical value for a stretch of road, of course. Excellent lateral velocity management. That's absolutely at the top end of my projections. So, this is an interesting technical challenge. Drifting uphill. The additional inertia is a very intriguing factor in how you would need the optimal corner approach. Before we're running some informal leaderboards for all of these little drives, and I've worked up a few of Haley's accolades. Have a look at them. There's a bit of a reward for doing them all. I'll take a look. Call me for the next one. I thought we'd been focusing on the classics a little unfairly. So, how about this? The 2020 151 Formula Drift Supra. This is based on a 2020 Toyota GR Supra, modified by Papadakis Racing, with uh, approximately 700 extra bhp. But higher baseline speed necessitates maintaining the drift at a greater lateral velocity. against the optimal angle. You are managing it nicely. This is a really tough corner. Be ready to functionally destabilize the rear. projection range.
topped out, but keep going for the, uh, I mean... For the leaderboards? Yes. Tell me, do you like volcanoes? What are you up to, Rob? Uh, nothing at all. Thanks for the help. I'll call you. Cat, drop by when you have a moment. A drift-rigged muscle car? I'm on my way. That's the Formula Drift Mustang. Very nice. It is. I told you this was a muscle drift, and we've got 6.9 miles of the nicest drift road I think I've ever seen to try it out on. Let's get cracking. We're dealing with a supercharged 5-litre V8, giving you a good centre of rotation, very slightly biased front, 900 bhp to push out the back. It takes some... Um, Jocularity, lateral thinking, to build a good drift car out of a muscle platform. I think this is a very competent attempt. was basically one and a half tons of 2015 Mustang GT. Just wait until you see... No, no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. sense. Watch the corners, though. Can't drift if we hit trees.
right on the projection. I think we can do better, though. Tire smoke must be visible from the city. I mean, if anyone was watching, which they're not. Okay, time to come clean. What are you planning? Just a little something we've been working. Well, you can wait a bit longer. You're no good at keeping secrets, Rob. You know that. I see you've brought some friends, Rob. Yeah, well, just the local chapter of Drift Club Mexico. We thought we'd surprise you. Well, there's more spectators than I expected for a secret club. Right, let's put on a bit of a show then. I've got a bit of a confession. You see, we've got another car for you to have a look at. Is that what I think it is? The RTR Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400. The first fully electric drift and Gymkhana platform. Should we take it out for a bit of a spin? This car was customized by Drift. all-wheel drive. The motor layout allows you to change drivetrain essentially at the push of a button. So, just toggle it over from all-wheel drive into rear-wheel drive, shutting down the front motors, and then off we go. The fastest drivetrain swap you will ever do. Right-left opportunity ahead. Careful as you manage the inertia transfer. Very 
very hard left, then right, then sideways into the tunnel. and we're heading for where we started. On behalf of Drift Club Mexico, as well as RTR and Ford Performance, let me thank you for this show of the noble art of intentional oversteer. So, we thought you might like to keep the Mach-E. That's amazing. But wait, won't Vaughn want it back, though? Oh, this is an exact duplicate of his. Let's just say I'm a bit excitable, too. <laughs>